Okay, uh, <clears throat> good evening from Malaysia and morning, afternoon to the rest of the world. This is, um, hang on, hang on, I'm just trying to click. <coughs> Wait. <coughs> oh, um, I, I noticed um, there's a bit of a, <coughs> sorry, there's a bit of the, the title is a bit slightly different than what was publicized in your website, but my, the, the topic is the same. Um, actually, well, it's me, it's a director of this Institute for Social Science, which I just left recently as a research fellow. Uh, so now I'm a bit of a freelance and working with them indirectly. So, so for this talk, my background, we have two different backgrounds. Both of us have been doing a lot of work on youth research and so on. So, um, Prof. Ismi is now heading the, this institute. And um, since I have a background in Malaysia, so that's how I got involved in this talk, invitation of uh, Professor Mikros. So, um, and then, um, so basically what uh, Prof. Ismi will be introducing is, um, <clears throat> is the, the future classroom concept of technology in learning. So let us uh, go to the next slide and um, let's go to the next slide. And then, um, okay, this is, um, <clears throat> this basically this um, talk is about the potential of this program which the UPM, in short, we call it UPM has, uh, has introduced to, in the teaching of the youth and the students, which I feel that it can also be applied in the teaching on the leisure for the for young people in the leisure. So basically, this is the objective of this our presentation tonight. Sorry, I used to tonight because we are already 10 p.m. <laughs> okay, uh, next. So <clears throat> As you know, everybody, in, you're not alone in this COVID thing. This issue this year has been the tough year. And uh, it is different from what we have been doing all the rest of in the past. So it affects everybody, including our youth, who are very vulnerable to these changes, um, where they have to undertake drastic changes to their lives, lifestyle, to thrive and to survive, you see. So it's not uh, one country, we are not the only country having the same COVID problem. All of us are facing it, this health crisis. But um, we have to do something about it, uh, how we are going to use uh, learning for them to empower them to, to deal with their lives in any crisis, not only COVID. Okay, next. So, Basically, as you can see that um, this is just introductory to the scenario and so on, that it has triggered a lot of problems, everybody. I, <clears throat> I'm not sure if uh, any country or I think I believe all of us face the same, same issues, crisis, simultaneous crisis, which um, I've, I have outlined here, but, I, but if anybody has uh, something different, then during the this Q&A session, you can share with, with us. We can also learn from each other, not only for us to share what we are presenting from Malaysia, but during the Q&A, anybody can also share something for us, all of us to learn from their own experience in that country. All right, next. So this is a technology enhanced education, which, um, which everybody, Dina has to embrace. I believe all of you also in every country now have to do online teaching, even in, in our university because of the pandemic. We are all on this uh, partial lockdown. We can, no students are allowed to enter the university. So now all teaching are done online. And fortunately, the UPM has, has developed this technology, this tool, which is me will explain short while. And uh, now it came at the right time for them to employ this technology, which um, which can be used for every use uh, in other countries as well. 
Okay, next. So um, basically, um, this is model we look at it that uh, in a, in in youth learning um, in crisis, then educating youth needs the support of technology and adult guidance and support. Adult guidance and support has to do with the research which we did with US by another our professor Latif, Stephen Krauss. So I came up with this model to show that how the flow is that uh, to, for you to thrive in crisis, there must be some form of education, which is backed by technology as well and adult guidance and support. Okay, next. So this is uh, this this is a summary of a study done by Zaudin in US, uh, which uh, which Stephen Krauss is a colleague of ours in the university professor. So <clears throat> it's a joint venture with US Zab Zaudin. In fact, this research is also mentioned in the Linda Cowell's latest book on uh, out of school youth recreation. So this is basically, they, they found that it's very important for youth to be engaged with adults for them to try. So they, they did this study and um, it's still ongoing. If uh, probably it's me want to explain it later, he can explain. Okay, next. Um, I, I found this study about how youth learning from a study done in Australia by Choi in Jalahe that um, there are four, four stages where, where young people learn from childhood to adulthood. So, so this Choi and Jalahe, this study from this paper, they came up with actually, there are four stages between uh, pedagogy and andragogy. So these are, so from my study, which I apply this, the, uh, this concept also in my PhD thesis on youth mentoring, then I found that for youth learning, it's basically in stage two and stage three, teacher centered to high pedagogy, high andragogy to low pedagogy and high andragogy. So uh, for those in case, those who are not familiar with pedagogy, high andragogy, andragogy is more adult learning, low pedagogy, Pedagogy is more of a children's learning. So there are more details of it. Uh, if anyone wants to know, the, want to see the paper, you can email to me later. I have the full paper from Cho and Delahe. And um, so these are the stages. I, I was impressed with this because uh, when I read about it, I find that actually this is what everybody, all of us has been going through in terms of learning. So I find very applicable in every every learning situation, even for the you and you can apply also for the if you are to educate you on the Malaysia. So next. <clears throat> okay, this is the model I came up with the stages of how you engage youth. It starts of embracing them, that means acknowledging who they are, then you deal with them, engage with them. Before you engage with them, you ensure them to get them. <coughs> ensuring they give them opportunities and so on. Then through education, they get enlightenment or they get enlightened or realization. And then from there, you give, you enable them to do, <clears throat> to proceed with their growth and so on, and then give them the empowerment to make their own decision. And from there, once they are empowered, they establish themselves. This is something, this is a flow which I developed from my own uh, uh, experience in youth work and uh, from my studies about about youth development process engagement the AEs. Okay, next. So when uh, this is a crisis situation where it is a very stressful for everybody, including the young people, the youth, and so on. So. Um, these are basically a, a thing everybody, all of us, not only Malaysian youth are facing, I believe the rest of you also you are facing this situation, especially with the youth and so on. Um, these are the changes which all of us are undergoing now, a paradigm shift. Okay, next. <clears throat> so 
So in this <clears throat> pandemic, everybody has to be very creative, innovative in op optimizing their free time. They share their experiences so that others can learn through all the digital technologies and so on. YouTube, we back Zoom like this, everything. And now there's a new concept of sharing, which I found in a few groups which I associated with. They call it the new concept of <coughs> community engagement called con community of practice. I've been having this session also with another group in Singapore on uh, mentoring, youth mentoring and so on. So these are now become the, the, the new model, all these tools and so on. So whether, so whether we like it or not, this is our new normal technology is part and and the necessity now in our lives and for the youth. Next. So this is um, some photos I got from a friend who took about how the, some of the youth are dealing with uh, this crisis um, by through their, how they practice some leisure activities in their, in their lives under this crisis situation. Uh, it was taken by a teacher in the school in Kuching um, Sarawak, which is in, in East Malaysia. Uh, I got these photos from Dr. Yasmin Yakub, one of our former students, also PhD student, who's now with the UPM campus in Bintulu, Sarawak. So, um, this uh, just a few photos. How, as you can see, one of them is swimming in the pool in the house, play music, gardening, exercising, and so on. So these are just a few examples of how youth are thriving now in this crisis when they cannot socialize, cannot go out, you know, in the outside world under special lockdown. So next. So education and technology is, um, is uh, where it's becoming the future classroom is now becoming virtual. Learning is now more towards non-formal rather than more formal classroom sessions in the classroom. And, as you, and, uh, and again, from the Troy and Dilahi model, is is high pedagogy and high andragogy form of learning. And this is where digital technology-based learning is becoming the new norm. So it's also the education to technology is now the new future in teaching and educating the youth. Next. And so UPM has developed this concept of a Putra Future Classroom to nurture future technology leaders among youth and for their education. So this is just sharing this concept which they had developed, um, which, um, which after this, Prof. Ismi will explain further. He has been very much into developing this concept of Putra Future Classroom. Next. Okay, okay Prof. It's me. It's okay, yours now. Okay, thank you, Dr. Lee. Uh, uh, hi, everyone. I will just share with you on our initiative on uh, Putra Future Classroom. This is basically a smart classroom. Before this, we our idea of having this is we understand that learning does not take place just within the four walls. We envision that learning can take place uh, anywhere, even outside the classroom. And actually, the the pandemic actually is a blessing in disguise that that now we have uh, sort of like fully utilized uh, the use of this uh, new way of learning. Basically, students learn through online, through other uh, social media platforms to make sure that uh, even though they cannot enter campus, uh, learning uh, never stops. So I, I'm just going to share a bit on uh, what we have uh, in this uh, smart classroom. Okay. Oops. Okay, sorry, uh, technical problem. Okay. 
So in this uh, Putra Future Classroom, our concept is to maximize the technology, basically to enhance the 21st century uh, teaching and learning. Uh, because we believe that through the use of technology, uh, we can narrow the disparity uh, across youth and learners uh, wherever they are. So we come up with uh, more technology-based education programs to support uh, youth across this, the, the nation by making use of customized and personalized curriculum suit with uh, the kind of students uh, that we are uh, dealing with. So this is basically uh, the philosophy behind uh, our, our future classroom, basically blending philosophies, principles, and the, the values in terms of uh, helping our youth. And then we are uh, basically guided by uh, the educational productivity model, uh, basically looking at the interconnection between psychosocial environment, physical environment, and the teaching or mentoring environment in nurturing the person to become uh, a wiser, uh, more matured, and so on and so forth. So these are our, some of our innovative practices in the classroom because we believe that through innovative pedagogy, we can um, enhance active, active learning and through active learning, we can increase uh, student engagement. So what is active learning? It is when educators engage learners to do meaningful learning and thinking about the things that they are doing. So very much related to what we are doing in leisure education as well. So our active learning best practices here include uh, getting students to be involved in role playing, case studies, group projects, peer teaching, uh, doing demonstrations, discussions, and many more. So this is a short video about what we have in the university, um, the, the smart classroom concept. So this is the building and the technology that we have.
Okay, so that's the short video. So this is I'm, I'll be going very quickly about this is the the smart classroom that we have at the faculty. So basically, we want to promote uh, crossover learning experience to optimize uh, the strengths of the learning space and to provide authentic and engaging opportunities for the students uh, to, to be involved in active learning. So in terms of contribution to the current practices, uh, we have seen an increased student uh, investment, motivation and performance okay, in the way they contribute to the class and to the learning. Uh, facilitate independent, critical and creative thinking among students. Uh, and then we, we can see the active learning keeps learners at the center of the design process. So it is very uh, learner-centered and students learn more when they participate in the process of learning. So we have uh, moved from a very uh, lecturer or teacher-centered to a very student-centered uh, approach uh, by the use of this uh, initiative. And experiential learning basically uh, nurtures and enhance engaging learning by doing and uh, cooperative learning. Uh, we can see students collaborating with classmates, which basically promotes uh, inclusive learning. It facilitates the whole group discussion. Uh, they become more creative, uh, imaginative, you know. Uh, as seen, we can see that by the products uh, created by, by the students. Uh, and the classroom become very stimulating. We bring the real world learning into the class. You know, we make making teaching moments, uh, you know, uh, very rich. Uh, and then uh, we bring the industry into the classroom by, by getting our industry practitioners to come and share their experiences with the students. So in terms of usability, we can see yeah, uh, in terms of outcome, there's a change in the mindset, mood, and overall classroom uh, vibe you know, through the Putra Future Classroom. It drives deeper learning engagement among youth and students. It is very practical and easy to be, to be implemented because basically activities done in the classroom uh, basically supplement lecturers uh, without you know, having to change our existing cost structure. So basically it's complementing yeah, rather than revamp revamping the whole thing that we have been doing with our students. Uh, so this is an example of how the active learning uh, time yeah, involving individuals when they do work in partners and also in group. So again, we mentioned to you just now that uh, by having this initiative, uh, we get students to be engaged in active learning and the uh, the learning process becomes very elastic uh, it takes very little class time of uh, or the entire class because everyone is so busy you know uh, being very active in um, uh, trying to complete tasks given by the facilitators so now teachers lecturers play role as facilitators and mentors uh, and designers of learning environments where the innovative pedagogies matter. So it's, it's very much cooperative and collaborative. Okay, and uh, of course, this is an example where we have intellectual discourse with the youth and students. And we have now moved from the university. Uh, we believe that the infrastructure can be uh, scaled up and can be uh, introduced to schools outside the campus. So we have managed to uh, develop uh, another future classroom in schools. And this is an example that we have in one of the state in Malaysia, in Perak, okay, whereby the, the lecturers uh, behind this uh, future classroom at the university work with teachers at school to create the future classroom, you know, uh, at schools. Huh? Uh, and then we notice that uh, eventually teachers are able to manage the classroom technology wisely by providing group collaboration and provide the checkups on learning through online quizzes or games. So learning become uh, more interesting. 
so the interviews that we conducted with students see a change in terms of their view towards learning. Uh, this is a place, this is a learning space that they look forward to go to every day. And of course, we we can see that with this concept, you know, we can always practice this adaptive teaching, uh, creating flexible learning spaces according to learning objectives, and it provides an empowering learning experiences and increasing students' engagement. Um, and then, of course, this is the the the, the job of university community. Uh, the ministry uh, to make sure that this initiative will really benefit uh, youth and students. So, so this is uh, a study that we did, you know, to make sure we can look at the impact of the, the smart classroom to students. So we consider the, the, the contribution of this social sphere, ecosphere, and technosphere. Um, basically, uh, capitalizing on what Yang and Huang, you know, uh, introduced about the learning space uh, framework. So we carried out a survey to look at the impact on students' outcomes huh, in terms of the physical and psychosocial context of the classroom environment. So in terms of, in terms of physical context, what we meant by physical context is uh, you know the the opportunity you know just of uh, showing manageable accessing comfort and enhancement and in terms of psychosocial outcomes it is in the form of uh, student involvement student heutagogical skills meaning meaning to say that helping peer teaching peer learning and also cooperation so this is the mean scores of the study variables so you can see you know uh, in terms of we look at in terms of cooperation, pedagogical skills, involvement, enhancement, comfort, accessing, managing, and showing. And the conclusion that we, okay, this is the, uh, the result. And the conclusion that we can make is that uh, ultimately active learning is influenced by the learning space. So providing learning space is very crucial to ensure that uh, we can facilitate uh, youth you know, to enjoy, to be empowered, and to be engaged in whatever activities that uh, we want to create uh, with them. Okay, so um, moving forward, we are now basically making use of this. Um, before this, we talked a lot about uh, the three components, as in, as in infrastructure, curriculum, and infrastructure. And during this pandemic, we noticed that um, you know, the use of IoT, learning analytics, um, intelligent resource sharing by cloud, uh, blending cutting edge knowledge and fundamentals and converging pedagogy, andragogy, pedagogy, and technology are very crucial because students uh, have to learn in a new norm. They no longer can come to campus at the moment. So we are trying our very best to make sure that uh, their learning is not um, uh, sort of like, uh, it's not distorted. So technology enhanced education really helps. Okay, um, all right, now back to Dr. Lee. Please, Dr. Lee. Okay, <clears throat> so, <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> this is the final part of the presentation. So, <clears throat> I look at it, we look at it that these are all the basic challenges which the youth is, um, is facing now, and then possible responses on how they deal with it. And of course, um, technology, technology is a tool that comes in between all these things. Um, so even though what Prof. Ismay show are the technology, the innovative to the innovative uh, and creative mindset from the experience um, they learn in the classroom there and uh, and as you can see it's all about experiential learning which uh, which leisure is all very much about uh, leisure engagement is a form of uh, experiential learning so 
how to maximize the technology to use for the positive ratio. Um, those were just examples which they did in the classroom, but of course, we can apply it in the ratio context as well. So next. Um, um, okay. So educating about uh, ratio is about, is a real ratio experience that requires a real sense. Of course, uh, a technology cannot replicate a full ratio experience through the six senses, but by applying it, um, you can deal with the constraints of this uh, crisis situation of lockdowns and so on. Um, as you can see, many people cannot have uh, physical activities now. So technology can help to a certain extent, although it doesn't fully replicate. And uh, it really enhances learning, virtually demonstrating the choices, the options, the creativity, new ideas and so on. So it's a new norm for future classroom of learning that is here to stay. So youth are empowered to embrace technology through innovation, creativity for their leisure and well-being needs. So these are the new technologies to be integrated into leisure engagements. How you are going to do it and apply it is up to you, but uh, it's your up to your creativity and so on. So, but definitely you, we cannot run away from all these technologies now. And this new field is so wide open, you know. So it's up to the individual. Next. <clears throat> okay, this is the second last slide. Excuse me. <clears throat> so this is uh, photos of, uh, for most of you who are overseas. This is uh, some photos of uh, our campus area, which covers 1,200 acres. This is the main campus in Sedan, which is about 20 kilometers from the Kuala Lumpur city center, uh, which is not very far, half an hour's drive. Of course, um, we have a branch campus in the Borneo site in Bintulu, which is smaller. But these are some of the photos in our main campus. And you see over here, this is our main hall where all of us graduates will graduate from for the convocation. It's a few. And then this side all over the campus, we love UPM to promote the <coughs> camaraderie and the loyalty to the camp to the UC. This is the, our main security gate to the main entrance to the campus. And here's a aerial view of the big campus, uh, these two. Uh, and of course, this is this is the square, which is just outside the main convocation hall and so on. OK. Um, if you want to see more of the views, you can go to the website, upm.edu.my. So, um, all right, uh, one last final slide. And that is, uh, thank you for your, all your attention. These are our emails. Uh, although I'm officially not really with the university now, but being a graduate there and uh, still, the, still working with them indirectly to ease me with the institute which I was formerly with. So, um, they are still very much in contact. And um, if anything further, you can um, just email to us and we will see what we can do to help you. Okay, thank you everyone. And in thank Malay, you, we call you. it Terima Kasih. Okay.